Hello everyone. Hello, welcome to our channel Spectrum Art Creation. Yes, welcome everyone. Madison and I are so glad that you are here. Today we are going to be working on decoupaging an actual box. Um, it's something that you know we we all love to work with napkins we love to decoupage obviously we do a lot of tags and a lot of uh, journaling pages and book covers and you know but it's been a while since we've actually done anything else so we have um, a box that we want to do as a gift for one of our neighbors and we've decided to use this very lovely napkin I will be linking all of the products it um, to the store so look for all the links down below for any of the products that we actually use and please if you have any questions feel free to go ahead and leave us a comment uh, so let's go ahead and get to crafting If you notice, one of the things that I love to do is I love to actually use my soft squeeze bottles, not only because it's soft and it's easy on the hands, but also because it allows me to actually put the product exactly where I want it versus having to dip the brush into a big container or anything like that. So I can actually, um, you know, use put the product exactly where I need to, even if it's a very small touch up such as that, right? Okay, now that our box has been gessoed, um, we're going to, and again, I'm not too worried about the inside because I'm going to actually be lining it. So I'm more, um, you know, concerned about the outside, but again, not terribly so because we are going to be decoupaging on it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to grab our napkin. Now, some napkins have two plies, some napkins have three plies, um, so they kind of vary. And of course, depending on what pattern you have, you can decide, you know, obviously I can't use the, this one this way because it looks kind of weird. Well, actually it's not too bad with the two stairs coming down. That's actually kind of interesting. You could use it that way, but I'm gonna choose to use just a one panel so I can get the little birds in that image. So we're gonna take our napkin and we're gonna cut it. If you're doing a different look and you want a fussy tear, you're more than welcome to do that as well. You can also do a, you can also cut it right. What's that, honey? What's that? You can, don't chop off your neck. No. Right. Try to be careful with it. It is um, very soft tissue paper, so you want to be careful with it. So as I mentioned, if you try to actually stick this just the way it is right now, what's going to happen is you're going to get all kinds of bubbling and warping and basically tearing up the napkin because what's going to here is going to be the bottom part and then the top parts are going to come off, right? So you want to grab a little piece of paper and you could use washi tape, you can use um, just, you know, cheap um, scotch tape and you want to pull. In this case, this is a beautiful napkin and it just peeled like butter. All right. In some cases, they kind of get stuck, but you can always tell if there are any more plies just by looking at the translucency of it. Right. If you're unsure, you can actually tap on it just to make sure nothing comes up and it hasn't. So now we know that this is going to be 
the ply that we're going to be working with. These you can actually keep to the side because we can use them to actually smooth over, right? And we know that this is what we're going to get as far as coverage. Now, if this is a concern, I remember I have more panels here on this napkin that I can actually use Sorry, for the man. back. Exactly, yes, Princess, to cover the rest. I could also paint um, these parts right here, you know, in, in a light blue kind of wash, maybe a watercolor. That would be very, very pretty. But in this case, I am probably just going to decoupage some more of the napkin and have it just match up here and there, okay? So that is the next process. But again, it is super important that you actually peel your other plies and it's a very easy process just with a piece of um, clear tape. tape. Yeah, clear tape or some washi tape. But it is a step that you need to do. If not, you are going to struggle with your napkin and wonder why it's just not working for you. All right, let's get to some decoupaging. you're going to notice that this one actually only peeled one ply. You see how I can actually not see through the napkin? Uh-oh, if I glue this down, I'm gonna struggle. So once again, to just check, to make sure, just stick your tape and look, oh, this napkin is beautiful. It just peels so smoothly. Okay, and again, save those plies because we can either use them to flatten out or we can actually make our own napkins with those plies, right? Not to mention they are just tissue, so you can use them for mopping up um, or, you know, as a tissue in your purse. So just do not discard those and throw those away. Now that we are done with our lid for the most part, we've actually gone around and decoupage and made it seem pretty seamless. Uh, again, not completely finished, but it's now time to start thinking about what we're going to do with the bottom as that is actually drying. Now, the sky has got kind of a muddle effect, if you would. See that? Oh, I love that. Um, so we thought about just using sponge and paint and doing uh, mimicking that technique. But then we realized that the napkin actually lends itself. The napkin was like this, right? And we thought, ooh, what if we could just use a napkin so that it all has the same texture and feel as opposed to paint? And we realized that we could wrap this around the box and get a really nice seamless type of a look between the box and lid and the actual box bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, once again, continuing to simply remove the plies from our napkin. Oh, see, perfect. Those two came out. So easy. Okay. And again, you do want to be careful with not adding anything too heavy or too much weight. 
where the two meet, right? Because that's gonna create a lot of friction and it might actually tear. Of course, when we're done, we're gonna seal it. Um, but again, don't add you know, a very thick paper. You're gonna find yourself struggling or, or too many coats of paint because you're gonna find yourself struggling to try and get those two to fit in properly. some of these wrinkles you know I did the box lid kind of smooth but now that I see these wrinkles I mean I could rip this off if it's not the look you're going for you could also use saran wrap plastic wrap and that helps you to smooth it out if you cut, cut smaller pieces like if I was to cut the panels instead of wrapping it around um, that would be another easy way make sure you start in the middle and then smooth towards the outside but I'm so loving this because it gives it that nautical crackle finish that I think that we might even go for a crackle finish on this. Hmm. I really think that looks outstanding. I love this. Look, it looks like wood or something that's been left out and weathered, right, on the beach. I love that idea. So I think we are going to, to think about... Um, adding a crackle finish again without trying to add too much weight to it right okay great we're gonna do the same thing with the third napkin and that way we'll actually continue all the way around the box okay and also of course we're gonna dry in between to make sure we don't make any boo-boos Now the next thing you want to do is you want to create um, your inside covers, right? Um, to get a nice tight fit like this one, what we've done is to make sure, and again, see the box is not perfect, so one side might be a little more wider than the other or wonky. So what we do is we take our box and we trace all around it on whatever panel we're going to cut. In this case, it's going to be the bottom and I'm not too worried about you know the fact that the checkers are going to be um you know straight because we can always shave it down a little bit right obviously by tracing it on the outside we are getting a wider perimeter by a smidge than it should be um the other thing oh and I forgot to do it is you want to basically um again if you're working with something that's in you know imperfect or you know nothing is obviously perfectly calibrated you want to mark which way in which direction your paper is going and I just forgot to do it with this one so I'll show you what I mean by this here I put a little marking see that arrow I put a little marking on both sides to let me know this goes with that side right so I didn't do it with this one so now we're in a situation where I don't really know which way it was going to go 
but that's okay because like I said we have extra so we can always shave it down a little bit I want to say no I'm almost tempted to say that it was going to go this way well I'll start shaving it and then eventually we're going to figure out I can kind of see yeah that is the the box has got a little bit of a belly on this side and I see a little belly on this side of the paper or maybe this side no I think it's this way yeah I think so so now it's just a matter of starting to shave it a little bit right here and there yeah I should have marked it <laughs> see I'm glad we do this because then you guys can actually go oh yeah oh there we go that matches up nicely so that should be it except we are too too wide on this side so like i said we're just going to start trimming a little bit at a time until it fits And all that I'm doing at this point is running my nail, or you could use, you know, obviously one of your stylus pens, just to kind of mark where it's kind of sticking. And that helps me to trim it down accordingly. Again, this time I'm gonna be really careful to mark, right? Because I for almost forgot to do it again. So as I pull this out, I'm trying to do it so you guys can see it on camera, which is hard for me. I'm going to put a dot here and a dot here. And now I know that those two will have to line up and match up. And I can now see where I've actually creased it a little bit with my nail and trim it down as well. And I think it's mostly the corners that are sticking. I could probably use a corner rounder to rectify that problem. Let's just trim a little bit all the way around and it should then fit pretty smoothly let's see again dot with dot uh, and there we go we've got a great fit on the bottom okay and then I'm going to continue to do that for all of the panels all around um, and then we'll start adding some finishing touches after that
dry and that did not take long um, it took about an hour and a half for actually for, for it to actually dry um, we've got some great crackling oh, I don't know if you guys can let me see I know the light is fighting us there we go um, it just looks awesome but um, one of the things that um, Madison and I were discussing was the crackling looks amazing. Do we want to go ahead and take that a step further? Because you can. One of the best things to do with crackle, with the crackle effect for it to actually come through, right? It looks great just as it is. And now our box is protected. So we sealed it and cracked it all at the same time, which is fabulous. The one thing that um, you can do is actually use your distressed um, stains or I'm sorry, inks or the Stamperia or Stamperia um, vintage paste is fabulous for actually getting in those cracks and making it look uh, even more vintage or to for the cracks to actually show up, right? Because it'll actually enhance those cracks. But um, we weren't sure if we wanted to go that dark on this. So we're still kind of debating. We're not sure yet. But the other thing that we were talking about, right, Madison, was to actually add some additional pieces. Mm -hmm. So we pulled um, some Little Birdie primed chipboard. We've pulled some um, metal corners because we definitely want to do something on the bottom in the corners. Uh, and then we pulled some graphic 45 oh. antique claw feet. Claw feet. Yeah, what about them, honey? I think that they would work. You like those? More, yes, and I think that they would actually be like like a jar, like you know, on the outside of the, like that penny jar. Yes, like a little fancy jar kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, if those are your favorites, we might do that as opposed to these. These are and and these are also available in the store. These are pretty neat. They come with the little screws, but they're quite cool as well because they have these little feet on them. I don't know if you guys can see that there you go but i agree with you that these are gorgeous so we'll see but if you're leaning towards those that's fine and then of course we pulled um some uh tim holt cure knobs as well because we're thinking that would be great on the lid to actually help you know lift the lid and make it you know look a little bit more fancy and um then the other thing that we were discussing was whether or not to actually seal the paper on the inside so those are a few things that we're gonna um be working on and that will add the finishing touches to our box so uh, when we are done we will do some still photos
and that was just a matter of letting it dry once it actually does i will come back with some still photos we have plenty of fencing we have plenty of napkins we have plenty of other pieces um, in addition to so um, it has been so much fun and I hope you guys have actually enjoyed it and are excited to craft along and break out some of your napkins for decoupaging don't forget we have lots and lots of napkins um, and they are all beautifully imported um, napkins from Germany most of them some of them are of course from other European nations um, but the quality of our napkins uh, we definitely is something that we strive to maintain because as you can tell Madison and I just love working with them. So be sure you guys check out the store. Let us know if you have any questions. Once it's all dry, I will come back with some still photos for you as well and leave all the links down below. Uh, again, we look forward to hearing from you and hearing your comments, reading your comments. Thank you so much. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. Have a blessed day. Bye. Bye-bye.